Hello and welcome to this video, the Friday video for module number four. And we're going to be looking at problem number 11 because it allows us to talk about critical values, hypothesis testing, p-values, and showing how to do all these calculations using StatCrunch. Remember, use the computer to do the calculations, use your brain to do the interpretations. So let's get started. So here we are, problem number 11. I'm going to start up StatCrunch. Probably should keep this open. I'm going to go ahead and boom. You don't want to see all my bookmarks. OK. So complete parts A through C below. OK. Uh, no information to read, so we'll just jump right in. Determine the critical values for a right-tailed test. Now let's see if it's we're determining critical values. So I'm going to jump right in here. Stat, calculators, and this is going to be a t distribution. So I'll go down here to t. Okay, so we need the critical values for a right-tailed, which means it's going to be over here. So we're going to look for p greater than or equal to. Right tail test of a population mean that has alpha of 0 0.10. So the probability is going to be 0.10. Uh, degrees of freedom is 15. Uh, so it's 0 0.095, uh, three decimal places. So it's going to be a positive. It's positive because it's right-tailed. And it's 0 0.9. I'm going to read, make sure that this is right. This is 10. Uh, compute. There we go. This is 1.341. Three decimal places, 1.341. Check answer. Fantastic. Okay, B, critical values for left. Okay, so left is going to be over on this side. It's going to be less than or equal to. Um, sample size sample size of 20, uh, which means degrees of freedom will be 20 minus 1, which is 19. And I need an alpha of 0.05. That's the probability. It's going to hit compute. So it's negative. Again, it's negative because it's a left tail test. And then three decimal places again, so 1.729. Ha. And three. Uh, or C. Determine the critical values for two. Two tailed. So we're going to look at the bottom half and the upper. So there's going to be a both a plus and a minus. I'll just go ahead and pull that up right now. Um, for an alpha of 0 0.10, sample size of 18, so degrees of freedom will be 18 minus 1, which is 17. And alpha of 0 0.10, so I'm going to put alpha over 2 in here. Because we got half of the 10% over on the left, and we're going to have half of the 10% on the right. That's why I had to divide the alpha, of, alpha by 2. So it's going to be plus or minus, and it's 1.740. If I did my, let's just double check, n is 18. 18 minus 1 is 17 degrees of freedom. Um, we have a two-tailed test. So we're dividing alpha by 2. So it's 0.05. We did the compute. I'm going to check the answer. Good job. So again. This is the power of using StatCrunch. We can have the computer do the calculations for us. All we have to do is know what we need from the computer and how to interpret it. While we're here, let's go ahead and do problem number 12 as well. So think of this as a bonus. And I didn't close out StatCrunch, but. So I test, uh, let's see if I'm getting rid of this, don't need it. Um, actually probably could make this a little bit smaller. Uh, one sample, because we only have one mu, we're not comparing mu's. Uh, random sample, 
We're given S, we're not given sigma, therefore it has to be a t-test. Um, so we're going into stat, t, one sample. And it's based on summary data, because they're giving us x bar and s. We don't have to calculate it ourselves. So let's fill in the information we know for this one. x bar is 105.5. s is 8.6. N, where is the sample size? Where is, ah, there it is, 20. And we're performing a hypothesis test. Null hypothesis is mu is equal to 100. And the alternative hypothesis is not equal to, so oops, we'll just leave it not equal to. And we're done, so let's hit compute. See what information it gives us. It repeats back that we're, draw, uh, we're trying to test the mean of a population. The null hypothesis is mu is equal to 100. The alternative is mu is not equal to 100, so it's a two-tailed test. The sample mean is 105.5. That matches what we're given. Standard error is s over the square root of n. Degrees of freedom is n minus 1. t stat is 2. Po oh, there we go. Uh, three decimal places. 2.860 right there. Um, oh, we need to test it at the 0.01 level. So we need to find the critical values at the 0.01 level. Remember that's calculating it using the t-distribution. And it's a two-tailed test. How many degrees of freedom are there? 19. It's a two-tailed test because the alternative is not equal to. Uh, so alpha over 2 is equal to 0 0.005. So the critical values are going to be negative 2.86, uh, three decimal places, 2.861 and 2.861. Both the negative and the positive. And now we're going to draw the t distribution that depicts the critical regions. So we've only got the left side here, but this is two critical values. So we're going to have the left and the right. We're going to have coloration in two tails. So that's going to be C. It's a two tailed test. Again, alternative is not equal to, therefore it is a two-tailed test. And will the researcher reject the null hypothesis? Okay, we have a t-value of 2.860. It is not less than negative 2.861 or greater than 2.861. Therefore, we are not going to reject the null hypothesis. So let's look at the options. There is not sufficient evidence to, for, the rejecter to direct, for the researcher to reject the null hypothesis. That part's true. Since the test statistic is not between the critical values. Oh, wait, that's false. Test statistic is between the critical values. So if I'm going to hit the make this bigger thing, remember this line is 2.861. Our test statistic is just to the left of that at 2.860. So it is between the critical values. So A is not right. B, the researcher will reject the null hypothesis. That's false. We're not going to reject. Test statistic is between the critical values. If the test statistic is between the critical values, we will not reject. Uh, there is not sufficient evidence to, for the researcher to reject the null hypothesis since the test C is right. Seems like whenever you're in doubt, check C. The researcher will reject the null hypothesis. No, we're not, since the test statistic is not between the critical values, but it is. C is correct. We fail to reject when it's between the critical values. Otherwise, we reject. Check answer. And we did very well. So let's review what we did on this problem. In the previous problem, we used uh, StatCrunch to calculate critical values. Right tailed tests had positive critical values, left tailed tests had negative, and two tailed tests had a positive and a negative. 
In this example, we calculated the test statistic. And by we, I mean, hello, StatCrunch calculated it for us. We calculated the test statistic. We calculated the critical values. And by we calculated, I mean, StatCrunch did it for us. Didn't have to do any math stuff. I mean, no calculator anywhere around here. Then we determined that it's a two-tailed test. And that's kind of important here. Since the alternative is not equal to, it's going to be a two-tailed test. We had to divide alpha by 2 because it was a two-tailed test. And because our observed value, 2.860, was between the critical values, we failed to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, there is not sufficient evidence for the researcher to reject the null hypothesis. And that was it. So we did the traditional method here, the critical value method, for testing this hypothesis. Again, hopefully this helped you. If not, leave questions in the discussion room, in the material questions discussion room, and we'll get to you. Have a great day. Take care.